long ago, in the lush forests of prehistoric Java, there lived a young Homo erectus child. In the heart of Indonesia, nestled among the lush greenery and ancient landscapes, lies a treasure trove of mysteries from our prehistoric past. Among them, the Mojo Kerto specimen, also known as the Perning Skull, stands as a remarkable testament to the ancient humans who once roamed these lands. Furthermore a growing number of claims place Homo erectus, outside of Africa and deep in Southeast Asia around the time Homo erectus first appears in Africa. The partial child's calvaria from Mojo Kerto, Java, Indonesia, is the most complete of the early specimens. The skull cap, belonging to a juvenile Homo erectus, is an extraordinary specimen. Its delicate contours and smooth surface revealed the grace and elegance of our early ancestors. The child must have been around 10 years old when fate intervened, preserving his remains for generations to come. The Mojo Kerto child provides a unique opportunity to peer into the lives of our ancient predecessors, and understand the challenges they faced in a rapidly changing world. Through careful analysis, researchers unveiled intriguing details about the child's life, and the Mojo Kerto child had been awakened from a slumber of hundreds of thousands of years. They discovered that the Homo erectus species, to which the child belonged, were early pioneers of toolmaking, fire usage, and communal living. They were able to adapt to different environments, displaying a remarkable level of intelligence and resilience. As the scientific community delved deeper into their findings, the story of the Mojo Kerto child began to unfold. It seemed that this young Homo erectus had lived during a time of great ecological shifts. The Earth was undergoing significant changes, with shifting climates and the rise of other human species. In fact, the child's skullcap provided crucial insights into the evolutionary journey of Homo erectus. Its brain capacity, though smaller than that of modern humans, suggested a remarkable capacity for survival and adaptation. It became clear that this species had laid the foundations for the cognitive abilities, that would eventually lead to the emergence of Homo sapiens. The Mojo Kerto child is a fossilized skullcap of an early human juvenile. This young individual's fossil brain case was discovered in a layer about 20 meters above a 1.81 million year old volcanic layer. The Mojo Kerto child has been the most contentious of the early human fossils discovered in Indonesia, though some argue that honor belongs to Homo floresiensis. If the Mojo Kerto child is indeed 1.81 million years old, this makes it the earliest fossil evidence of hominid dispersal outside of Africa. The Mojo Kerto child is the most contentious of the early human fossils discovered in Indonesia. Its discovery date and even the exact location have been widely debated. The skull was originally thought to be less than a million years old, but it was later determined to be around 1.81 million years old using Argonagan dating, which was a new dating method at the time. Geochronologists and paleontologists proposed a date of 1.81 million years ago using the Argonagan dating method, with a margin of error of 40,000 years. Indeed, the unexpectedly old age of the fossil sparked heated debate, because it meant that the Mojo Kerto child was as old as the oldest known African Homo erectus specimens, implying that Homo erectus may have left Africa much earlier than thought, or even evolved in Southeast Asia rather than Africa, as most scientists had assumed. The Indonesian island of Java has produced a remarkable number of fossil hominid remains. The more well-known Java man fossils are estimated to be 700,000 to 1,490,000 years old. Some scientists began to regard Java man as a subspecies, Homo erectus erectus, to distinguish it from other Homo erectus populations. The story of the Mojo Kerto child, an ancient relic from a distant time, resonates with people around the world. It reminded us of our shared history, of the long journey our species had undertaken to reach the present day. It sparked discussions about our origins, our place in the natural world, and the responsibilities we bear as custodians of this fragile planet. Today, the fossilized skullcap of the Mojo Kerto child rests in a carefully curated museum, serving as a bridge between the past and the present. Visitors from all corners of the globe come to witness this extraordinary artifact contemplating the incredible story it tells and pondering the mysteries that still lie buried beneath the surface, waiting to be discovered. Homo erectus first appeared on the Indonesian island of Java at least 1.6 million years ago, when Java was connected to Asia by a land bridge. This date has far-reaching implications for our understanding of the first, out-of-Africa, human migrations. 
Indeed, the migration of Homo erectus into Southeast Asia during the early Pleistocene is critical to our understanding of human evolution. Yet the limited consideration of the rapidly changing physical environment, combined with contentious datings of hominin bearing sites, makes securing the robust timeline required to reveal the behavior of early humans difficult. According to one recent study, researchers discovered that Homo erectus arrived in Java up to 1.8 million years ago. But when and how did Homo erectus spread throughout Southeast Asia? The first part of the question has gotten a lot of attention since the discovery of fossil remains in Java in the early 20th century. The second part, on the other hand, has largely gone unnoticed, despite the fact that understanding how Homo erectus dispersed holds clues not only to the climatic, ecological, geological and physiographic environment suitable for hominin dispersal, but also to some of the physical and behavioral characteristics of early humans. This question is especially pertinent given the unique position that Javanese Homo erectus occupy, not only as a historical landmark, but also as the cardinal position at the southeastern end of the early Pleistocene hominin realm. Sunderland, the drowned subcontinent in Southeast Asia that includes the islands of Indonesia was the home to this species. For at least two reasons, a thorough understanding of this time period is required to decipher the dispersal and behavior of Javanese Homo erectus. First, depending on the age, it is unclear whether Javanese Homo erectus arrived directly along the coastlines in a single Out of Africa episode, or if it stemmed from smaller size groups that expanded earlier in Southeast Asia. This implies that early humans could have entered Sunderland from various points on the Asian mainland. Secondly, the extremely transient paleoenvironmental conditions influenced the subsequent trajectories of Javanese Homo erectus across Sunderland. Sunderland was permanently continental during the early Pleistocene, whereas Java was an uplifting chain of volcanoes emerging from a shallow sea while Sunderland was slowly drowning. The arrival of terrestrial faunas and hominins on Java follows the transition from marine to more terrestrial environments. Within this broad geographical framework, the direction and pace of Homo erectus movements were determined by the physical environment of Sunderland and Java at the time of their migration, as defined by the river network, relief, and vegetation cover, according to the study. The gradual drowning of the shallow Sunder Shelf implies that Sunderland was above water for the majority of the Pleistocene. Thus, Sunderland was permanently connected to continental Asia 1.8 million years ago, according to these reconstructions. Per the report, Sunderland's long-term subsidence, caused by slow deformation of the Earth's interior, altered the landscape during the mid-Pleistocene. Lowlands gradually encroached on the majority of the shelf, with only a few rivers, followed by increasingly pervasive marine incursions during the most recent interglacial stages. During the early Pleistocene, Homo erectus most likely lived in the lowlands of Sunderland, particularly on the Mekong Isthmus that connected mainland Asia to the Sunder Shelf, or in a few hotspots on mainland Asia. These sites are currently buried beneath sediments, seawater, or both, which explains why there are few fossil finds outside of Java. Most likely, when the land bridges connecting Java and South Sunderland were opened during the early Pleistocene, Homo erectus arrived on the island as continental walkers rather than seafarers or islanders. The Indonesian island of Java is a hotspot for paleoanthropological research. The discoverer of the Mojo Kerto fossil, Eugene Dubois, wondered early on whether his revolutionary discoveries in Java, as opposed to his fruitless efforts in Sumatra, were due to early human habitats or to their preservation and outcrop. Nonetheless, anthropologist and Java man discoverer, Ralph von Koenigswald remarked more than 50 years after the Dubois discovery that, no other paleontological discovery has created such a sensation and led to such a variety of conflicting scientific opinions. The central claim of Du Bois' discovery was that it was a transitional form between apes and humans, a so-called missing link. As he concluded in his 1932 paper, I still believe, now more firmly than ever, that the ape-man of Java is the real missing link. Charles Darwin argued that humanity evolved on the African continent, because great apes like gorillas and chimps lived there. Though the fossil record has since vindicated Darwin's claims, the claims were proposed without any fossil evidence. However, did humanity leave Africa two million years ago, spread to Asia, and then return to Africa? Other fossils, such as Sangaran 17, the most complete Homo erectus skull found in East Asia, show that Homo erectus was present in Java as early as 1.66 million years ago. 
In fact, according to some paleontologists Sangiran, 17 from Java has similarities with much younger African specimens like Kabwe and Bodo. This all suggests a reverse migration of Homo erectus from Asia to Africa is a possibility. These findings rekindle the long-running debate over the origin and dispersal pathways of archaic humans, and call for a rethinking of the out-of-Africa paradigm, which provides a global roadmap for the dispersal of the genus Homo, but whose one-way direction may be called into question. Moreover, instead of a unidirectional, out-of-Africa, model, a multidirectional, shuttle dispersal model, is more likely to explain the complex phylogenetic connections among African and Eurasian species, and all populations of archaic humans, according to one recent peer-reviewed study. According to the study, Asia is a sink of hominid populations that receive more dispersals from Africa and Europe than it gives dispersals to Africa and Europe. In total, Asia received 42% of the total dispersal events and provided 24% of the dispersals to other continents. In total, 40% of all the dispersals were from Africa, while Africa received 22% dispersals from Asia and Europe. Africa is known as the mother continent because it is the oldest inhabited continent on the planet, and the term continent is derived from the Greek word for landmass or terra firma. Humans and their ancestors have been present in Africa for over 5 million years. Yet, the major land masses of the Earth all have coasts on a single, continuous world ocean. If continents are strictly defined as discrete landmasses encompassing all contiguous land surrounded by a body of water, then Africa, Asia, and Europe form a single continent, known as Afro-Eurasia. The Earth was in an Ice Age climate for most of human history, which meant that sea levels were much lower and Africa and Eurasia were one landmass, meeting the definition of continent. As a result, when discussing human evolution, maybe we should use the term Afro-Eurasia, rather than the political constructs of Africa, Europe, and Asia. Finally, world-renowned paleoanthropologists, including Chris Stringer of the British Museum and Stefan Milosevic, have even suggested that more progressive Homo erectus from Java could actually be Denisovans. This is a shocking revelation, because it suggests that human evolution was not a one-way migration out of Africa. In this primeval land, a child came into the world, a curious and adventurous youngster, always eager to explore the world beyond the familiar surroundings of his tribe. His eyes would have sparkled with wonder, and his nimble legs carried him through the untamed wilderness.